Hey guys, thanks for coming to this tutorial. So as you can see, we're going to be making this right here, this loader in the background. And this is actually going to be used in one of the apps that I'm working on right now, which is a recipe sharing app. So thanks for coming to this video and please don't forget to subscribe. Okay guys, so first things first here, we're going to start by creating a new project. We're going to create a single view application. I'm going to name this code tutorial underscore. I'm going to call this the uh, custom um, custom loader food. Okay. And copy that. I'm going to create a new folder on my desktop. I'm going to put it inside there. And as always, I want this to be as modular as possible. So I'm going to start by creating a new view here. So it's going to be a Swift UI view. I'm going to call this custom activity loader. Okay. And I'm going to get rid of the canvas for now. I don't really need that. And so inside of my custom activity loader, I'm going to start by creating a Z stack. Okay. And inside this Z, well, first of all, the Z stack, I'm going to tell it to edges ignore. I'll put something inside of it so it's a little happier. We'll say color dot, and let's just make it red. Okay. Colors dot red, and I'll make it an opacity of, I'm going to give it an opacity of maybe 0 0.8. So that way it's kind of like a desaturated light red. Then I'm going to say dot edges ignoring the vertical. Okay. So actually, I'll bring the canvas back and I'll let it run as we're working. So let's look at the finished product that we're going to be replicating here. So essentially, it's essentially just a Z stack. And then on top of that is a V stack that contains everything we're looking for. So what is it we're looking for? We're really looking for anything in right here. Okay, so it comes out to almost 20 lines of code. It really is not that much. So I'm going to create, here's our background, okay. So on top of that, I'm going to put a vStack. And inside that vStack, I'm going to put my image and I'm going to give it all these attributes. So I'm going to copy it and we'll talk about each one of these, okay? So actually, first thing we're going to do is at the very top, I'm going to create two new variables, okay? So this is the one we're working on. You can keep track of which one we're working on because on this one, I'll have the canvas open. But in addition, it says code tutorials underscore custom loader food at the top. Okay, so above the body, but in but inside of the custom activity loader view, I'm going to put one state variable called is animating, and it's going to be equal to false, and another one that's going to be called image, and it's going to be equal to 19. Now, let's kind of back up for a second and talk about why it's called 19. Okay, so the reason it's called 19 is because what I did is I found images that I liked. I found 30 icons, and here they are. I named them starting from 0 to 29, and I'm going to copy all those and bring them into the project we're working on together. Okay, so I'm going to copy those, and what you should do if you want to try to follow along is you can find your own set of 30 images, or you can find the download, you can find the images that I used if you download the link. You go to the download link in the description, you can download the whole project, you can actually copy my images over. Okay, so these are my 30 images, uh, 0 through 29, and I got all of them from Flat Icon. So um, I'm not paid by Flat Icon or anything like that. This is hardly sponsored. It's not that at all, actually. Uh, but I've tried Icon Z and I've tried Flat Icon. The only thing that made me come to you start using Flat Icon is that they actually let you use any size. Well, I shouldn't say any size, but up to 520, 512 kilobytes or sorry, pixels. Um, and SVGs and all that is actually free. You just have to give attribution, and that sold me. So I've been using this since I started. Since I heard about it, I've actually been using Flat Icon. Uh, over icons 8. So I'm a big proponent of this. Anyway, so here's where I found all my icons. So I have 29 icons now. And so this right here is just saying image equals 19. And what I'm what am I going to end up doing with that? I'm just, that's eventually going to be my startup image. It's going to start on image 19. So we have our two state variables up top. I have my vstack down here. Okay. And looking back at our finished product, remember this is the finished one because there's no canvas and title is the title of this is actually going to be if this is recipe this is actually a, uh, an app i'm working on right now and it'll be released pretty soon uh, i'm actually going to be beta testing i'm actually currently beta testing so if you're interested if you're someone that likes to cook or is looking for recipes please feel free to put me put a comment below and i'm happy to give you a link to the beta testing um 
but moving on forward. So what are we going to put in the V stack there? We're going to need to put an image and we're going to need to put all these other little things with it. So I'm going to copy all this. And, we'll, and so I know it's a lot of code and it's actually the bulk of it, but we'll talk about every piece of it. Okay. So I'm going to put it all there and then I'm going to comment all of it back out until we talk about it and I'll comment it as we go. Okay. So first thing I did is I said, I'm going to create an image and the image name is going to be a string with a value. Essentially I'm string interpolating the int back into a string. So image, image named 19 in the given case. Okay. Then I'm going to say the rendering mode is dot template, meaning that it can take uh, the image that I had. It's and the image I had was obviously black, right? But it reads where it was black uh, or where it wasn't white, or sorry, clear. And I can actually, if I say that the foreground color of this image is blue, I can actually change that image to blue now. So it doesn't have to remain with the original coloring, even though I'm using a PNG. So that's a nifty little trick. So I say rendering mode is template. Okay. And then I'm going to say it's resizable and I'm going to need to say it's resizable so we can get the spinning in and out. And then I'm going to say that the image itself has a width and a height of hundred. Okay. So that is its base width and height. So if I just hit resume right now, what I should get is this icon dead center in, in the middle of my, um, in the middle of my thing. So here it is, right? So that's image 19. It's, it's in the template form. Uh, it's resized and it has a height and width of hundred. So now I'm going to give it a rotation effect of 1080. Okay. And as you can imagine, 1080 is a perfect divisible of 360. So this thing, spun over 360 degrees three times and to us it looks exactly the same so you're probably wondering well if it spun 360 degrees why didn't i see it well you didn't see it because we didn't tell it to happen in an animated fashion it spun it and then just showed it to us in its final state the same way if i change it here to say 50 you're not going to see it animate you're just going to see it rotated 50 degrees actually sorry not that one right here 50. okay so you're probably now wondering what is degrees. So if, if this thing is, I'm going to close this out so we can look at this on one line. Okay. So rotation effect, it's going to rotate with an angle of degrees. And this is a ternary operator. So it's saying if is animating is true, then is animating. So right now it's false. Then it'll have rotated 1080. And if it's false, it'll be equal to zero. So what you'll notice that, like I said, no matter if I change it to true or false, I hit resume. It's going to look exactly the same to you. And that's because 1080 looks exactly like zero. This doesn't happen in an animated fashion until I tell it to show to us in an animated fashion. So now when I uncomment this area down here, it's saying, Hey, I want you to animate that process. So if you want to view an animation in the canvas, you have to make sure you click the play. Okay. So I want you to animate that process. So this one is what the rotation. Yeah. I want you to animate the process of spinning from zero to 180. Okay. Uh, so you'll, you still won't see anything, but we'll, we'll talk about why in a second. So I want you to animate, this is saying, I want you to animate this process of spinning to 1080 to zero. Okay. And I want it to be of, of what kind of animation it's called the ease in and out it means it's kind of uh, slow to start and slow to end, but it's full speed. Once it gets into the center, I want you to animate it over the course of 0.7 seconds. I want you to delay it and I want it to be delayed at 0 0.5 seconds. So if is animating is true, then I want it to be delayed. And if it's false, then I want it to be not delayed. And I want this, do I want this to repeat forever? No, I don't want it to repeat forever. Sorry, sorry, I'm sorry, I misread that. Do I want it to repeat forever? Yes, but I don't want it to auto reverse. So what that means is when I start repeating it, it'll actually just carry on forward. So it'll spin another 1080 degrees in, in the same direction it started spinning. So if it's clockwise, it's clockwise. Okay. So that's what this section right here. So why don't I see it? Well, you're not seeing it because we didn't see a flip from is animating being true to false. So right now we're declaring all the animations that will happen. We're getting ready for, for is animating switching from, from true to false or from false to true. We're going to start with false. Okay. So, and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add the scaling effect So the scaling effect. We'll say if is animating is true, then I want it to be scaled to one. And if it's false, I want it to be zero, which means that when this page starts, it'll start up at zero. And then when it, when it gets, when the whole process is turned on, it'll come over to one. 
okay, it'll, it'll expand back out to its original size. Now I'll uncomment this animation here, from here to here, and I'm saying I want it to animate with an animation that eases in and out the same principle, meaning slow to start, slow to end, over a duration of 0.7 seconds. I want it to have a delay, the same principle of is animating, 0.5 um, if it's true and 0 if it's false. That's what gives us this hold. If you remember, um, in, the, in the beginning, that's how it kind of spins up, pauses, and then spins back down, okay? And do I want this one to repeat forever? I do. But when I want it to repeat for this one, I want it to actually auto-reverse to be true. Because that means that it'll spin, it'll open, and then it'll spin back to small again. It won't repeat from small to big, and then from small to big abruptly, okay? And so that is everything we just copied over. So now yours should look like this. Everything we've done is from here to here. It can be seen on this screen, okay? We talked about every single line on here. So back to the finished product, I'm going to add one more thing here. I want to add a frame. I'm going to go over here. So on the V stack that contains everything, I'm going to actually add a frame width of 130 and a height of 130. Now, why would I do that? You're probably wondering. Well, some of these images are actually not circular. So this one is circular, right? But it's kind of inside of this box that's 100 by 100. If you remember, that's what we set it to, right? But as this thing spins, You'll, you can imagine that if this was actually a perfect square, because this container is a square, this the height kind of shifts because instead of having a square where the point the corners are here, 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 and here, now let's pretend it's shifted 45 degrees. Now it's actually slightly longer. And if you're trying to figure out, well, how much longer? Well, the answer is based on this 45, 45, sorry, 45, 45, 90 triangle, we know that the hypotenuse, so from here to here, is the size of the, each leg multiplied by the square root of two. So what that means is that when it's when it's rotated 45 degrees, its height is actually equal to 100 times the square root of two. That's roughly 130, 140, okay? So I'm just gonna say 130, actually, I'm honestly, I'm just gonna say 150. There's no, there's no harm in saying 150. Now, why does it really matter? Well, it really matters if what you wanna do is, is put some text underneath here and make sure the text doesn't get moved up and down and bobbed as this thing spins, okay? Because you'll be spinning the internal thing, but making sure that the external frame is still 150 and never gets moved, okay? And the last few pieces here is going to be these lines right here. So I'm gonna copy them over and we'll talk about each of those as well. So we'll go right here. So what do these lines say? I'm gonna comment all these out I'm going to say, the only thing I'm going to show you off the bat is I'm going to change the foreground color to be color dot white. Okay, and that's going to be a really instant change. You're going to see this thing flip from black to white. That you could have predicted. Okay, actually, we don't see it at all because of this one right here. There you go. But I'm going to flip it back to zero. That's the scale effect that I just changed. I'm just trying to show you that now it's white. So I'm going to flip it back to zero because that's what it technically should be at the start. So the code that we just added together is right here. Okay, so just from dot on appear ending at foreground color of color dot white. So what I'm saying is on appear, when this view appears, I want to start a timer. Okay, and this timer is going to be a scheduled timer. As you can see, it's doing exactly what we want. Okay, it's going to be a scheduled timer and it's going to have a time interval of 2.4 seconds. Where did I get 2.4 seconds from though? Well, I wanted to make sure that I had enough time for this thing to spin forward, pause, and spin back. And that is equivalent to 0 0.7 and 0.5, okay? So it's having now, it has just enough time to flip, to flip up and then flip down, and then flip up and then flip down, and then flip up and then flip down. So that whole process, the flip up takes 1.2 seconds because that's 0 0.7, 0 0.5, and the flip down takes 1.2 seconds. So the entire thing together takes 2.4 seconds. So that's where I got this interval of 2.4 seconds. And I'm saying what I want to do is this timer, every 2.4 seconds, I want it to repeat. And you have to put, uh, and we're not going to reference the timer object itself. So we're going to put uh, underscore in for the closure. And we're going to say that 
every 2.4 seconds, I want self.image to be equal to a new random number between 0 and 29, OK? And that new random number is changing this right here. And if you remember, 19 was the, num the name of this image. So if you remember, in my assets folder, I had 29 images. And what I'm doing is I'm running through these numbers 0 through 29 to pick a random one of those images every 2.4 seconds. So you never get the same thing repeating over and over. So that's the first thing that happens on a peer. And the second thing is I just say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to expand this so we can see a little better. The second thing that happens is I say self.isAnimating is going to be equal to true. And that right there is the, is the brains of just saying, hey, flip from is animating false to is animating true. And that is how you end up getting the actual animation to run. So we just finished everything we needed to do in order to watch this um, spinner spin. So thank you for watching. And if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. I'm going to click play one more time so you can see. And while that happens, I just want to mention one more time. So this actually is going to be used in an app that I'm working on right now that is actually currently in beta testing. And if you're someone who likes to cook or someone who uh, you know likes to share recipes or is looking for new recipes, uh, this, this could be a good app for you. And I'm looking for some beta testers. So please feel free to leave a comment in the uh, comments below. And I would love to get you connected. Thank you, guys. I'll see you in the next video.